As a reviewer, you have to be impartial, so keep that in mind as I say that Terra Mystica is the greatest game ever made. This is not my opinion, this is fact. Now the greatest game ever made is in space. I'm Rob from JTRPodcast.com and I'm going to show you how to play Gaia Project. This is a game for 1-4 to four players, plays in about 150 minutes, is designed by Jens Drollermuller and held at Ostertag and is published by Z-Man Games. You command a faction competing to colonise the galaxy and spread influence to become the most advanced and dominate the galaxy. There's quite a lot to set up so let's start with the players, pick a random start player and give everyone a player aid. Then, in turn order, players choose a faction. The example factions to use in the first game are listed in the rulebook on page 6. In clockwise player order, add a satellite to the left side of the turn order track. Variable turn order is an optional rule, but most people would agree it improves the game a lot without adding any complexity, so I'm including it here. A couple of the factions have additional setup rules. I won't go into those individually in this video, but be wary when selecting a race. Players choose the correct side of the player board for their faction, and add the buildings in their spaces. The white ore, blue knowledge and yellow credit markers are added to their mark spaces on the track. Place the Gaia formers off to the side of the board. The top right of the player board will show if the faction starts with a QIC. If they do, put it on the player board in that box. Add power to the power bowls. Put a number of tokens as printed in the bowls themselves. Ok, we'll come back to the rest of player setup in a bit. Randomly place a green backed tech tile on each space of the research board. Add the matching tech tiles on each to give 9 piles of 4 tiles. Place one random advanced tech tile on each of the 6 spaces. Return the rest to the box. Add one random federation token to level 5 of the terraforming research track. Put the resting piles green side up next to the board. Note the 12 point tile is grey on both sides. Randomly place one scoring tile on each round space of the scoring board. Return the rest to the box. These not only track the number of rounds throughout the game, but they give a bonus for performing certain actions during the round the tile is active. For example, during the first round of this game, players will gain 2 points when they build a mine. Add two random final scoring tiles to each space on the scoreboard. Players can use a cube to track their progress of the endgame scoring tiles on the adjacent tracks. Pick a number of random round boosters equal to the number of players plus 3, return the rest to the box. Stack the rest of the resources near the board. Set up the game board as shown in the examples on page 7 for your first game. Use the advanced rules on page 19 for future games if you wish. Back to player setup, each player should add a token to each of the research tracks on the research board. Then, move spaces on the relevant research track as shown on the top right hand corner of the player board. For example, the geodons move one space on the brown terraforming track. If the space you're on shows a resource with a star and a white outline, gain that resource. For example, moving onto this space will give you a QIC. If a player gains ore, money or knowledge, they move the relevant token on their track. QICs and Gaia formers are placed on the player's faction board. Power is a little bit different and will be explained shortly. Players place one token on 10 victory points. In turn order, players place their leftmost available mine on the board on one of their home planets. The home planet is a planet of their colour. In reverse order, players place a second mine. The rulebook has suggested initial mine placement for your first game on page 7 if you're using the suggested starting factions and board setup. In reverse turn order, players choose a round booster and put it in front of them. Before gameplay, let's look at the power bowls and how power moves. Some actions let you charge power, this is shown with this arrow icon. When charging, you move power from bowl 1 to bowl 2 first. If bowl 1 is empty, charge power is then moved from bowl 2 to bowl 3. When spending power, you spend it from bowl 3 back into bowl 1. If you gain power, shown with this plus symbol, you add the power from the supply into bowl 1. Discarded power can be discarded from any bowl unless specified. On to gameplay, which is 6 rounds of 4 phases, income, gaia, actions and cleanup. In the income phase, which you also take at the start of the very first round of the game, gain anything with a hand under it in any order from your faction board, your round booster tile, any tech tiles your own, and your current level on each track of the research board. In the Gaia phase, you'll do things that won't make sense until you know the game better, so I'll come back to this phase later. In the actions phase, players will take turns taking one of the eight available actions. The first is to build the leftmost mine from the player board on a planet if it's empty, accessible, and habitable. Accessibility is based on the range which is determined by the position on the navigation track. For example, if you're on step 0 or 1 of the navigation track, your basic range is 1, which is the adjacent space. A player can spend a QIC to temporarily extend the range by 2 spaces for each QIC spent. For the planet to be habitable, it must match the colour of the faction or a cost must be paid in order to terraform the planet. For example, to terraform a white or red planet for this race is 1 terraform step. A black or orange planet is two terraform steps, etc. 
Each terraform step costs a number of ore depending on the level on the terraforming research track. For example, on level 2, each terraforming step costs 2 ore. A green Gaia planet can be made habitable by anyone by spending 1 QIC. If a mine or any other building is built within two spaces of another player, they have a chance to charge power as a free action. In clockwise order, players may charge power equal to the value of their most powerful building within range, a cost of one point fewer than the power gained. For example, a player builds within a range of a player's mine. The power of the building is one, so they charge one power at the cost of zero points. If that building were a planetary institute, they would charge three power at the cost of two points, etc. This is all or nothing, so if they're not willing to pay 2 points, they are unable to charge any of the 3 power. The power of a structure is shown on the player board. Mines are 1, training stations and research labs are 2, and planetary institutes and academies are 3. The second action is to start a Gaia project if you have an available Gaia former and have access to a purple transdim planet. Gaia formers are gained by advancing on the purple Gaia project research track. First, spend power by moving it from bowls 1, 2 or 3 into the Gaia area of your player board and place the Gaia former on the Tramsdim planet. The number of power required is determined by the position on the Gaia project research track. At levels 1 and 2, the cost is 6 power. While a Gaia former is on a planet, that planet is accessible to that faction, but not accessible from that faction when looking at adjacency or accessibility. Gaia formers are resolved in the Gaia phase in the following round, so I'll go into that in more detail later. Action 3 is to upgrade a structure. The board shows you the flow of allowable upgrades. Trading stations can be traded to the right into a research lab or up to a planetary institute. To upgrade, pay the cost of the building, take the leftmost one from the track and return the replaced building to the rightmost empty space on the player board. If you build your planetary institute, you gain your faction ability which is printed on the player board. If you build a research lab or academy, you gain a tactile as shown by the outline of a tactile behind the structures on the player board. Gain any standard tech tile, but you can't have more than one of the same tile even if it's covered by an advanced tile. If you take one of the six below each research track, you advance on that track. If you take one of the three bottom tiles, you can advance on any track on the research board. Remember to take resources with the star icons the first time you land on them on these tracks. Action 4 is to form a federation, which is how you get these federation tokens. A federation can be formed by colonised planets with buildings totalling at least 7 power and are connected by the player using satellites. Discard 1 power to place a satellite on a non-planet space. A player can do this as many times as they need to to form a federation and chooses which planets become part of that federation. But the player must use as few planets and satellites as possible. Each space can hold 1 satellite per player and the planets and satellites of the new federations can't be directly adjacent to your existing federations. If a federation happens to be formed without the need for satellites, put the record token on the board to show this. After a federation is formed, take a federation token, keep it on its green side and gain the reward shown on the tile. Action 5 is research progress, spend 4 knowledge and advance 1 level on a research track. Any bonus at the level the marker is currently on is active immediately and again, remember to gain anything with a star icon. You could take the advanced tech tile if you are on level 4 or 5 of the track and you have one federation tile green side up and you have one uncovered standard tech tile. Flip a federation token to its grey side, cover a standard tech tile with the advanced tech tile to gain its benefit but lose the benefit of the standard tech tile it covers. To advance to level 5 you must be able to flip one of your federation tokens to its grey side and only one player can advance to level 5 on each track. If you pass the power charge line you charge that much power. Action 6 is to take a power and QIC action. Pay the cost by spending power or QICs. Take the action and cover it with a token to show it's been used this round. Spend the amount of power shown to gain knowledge or credits or power. The two actions that give you terraform steps allow you to take the build a mine action using these to reduce the cost of terraforming one or two steps. Or can be paid if additional steps are required but unused steps can't be carried over and other actions can't be used to give you additional terraform steps. For the QIC actions, spend 4 to gain a tactile and advance on the track as normal. Spend 3 QICs to score one of your federation tokens again and gain the resources, or spend 2 QICs to gain 3 victory points, plus 1 for each different planet type, not including Gaia planets, you have colonised. Action 7 is to take one of the special actions. These can be found on the player's faction board, tactiles and round boosters. Just take the action and cover it with a token to show it's been used this round. On top of these actions, there are free actions which can be taken any number of times on the player's turn. Discard a power from bowl 2 to move a power from bowl 2 to bowl 3. Resources can be converted as the chart on the player board instructs as a free action. Just exchange the resources or pay the power. The final action is to pass. 
The player will take one of the available round booster tiles, place it face down in the play area to show they've passed and return the one they used this round to the supply. Move the satellite on the turn order track to the topmost space on the other side. After passing, a player can still charge power but do nothing else including taking any free actions. When all players have passed there is a bit of a clean up phase. Remove tokens from covered actions, flip round booster tiles face up and flip face down the round scoring tile from the previous round. Then go into income phase on the next round and start a new round in the new turn order. After income is the Gaia phase which I'll go through now you have more information. Here move power tokens in the Gaia area of the player board into bowl 1. If you have a Gaia former on a transiting planet, place a Gaia planet token on it under the Gaia former. The planet is now a Gaia planet and the Gaia former stays there until you build a mine on it and only the faction that owns the Gaia former can colonise that planet. If a mine is built on a previously placed Gaia former, return the Gaia former to the player's faction board. After 6 rounds the game ends. Players score 18, 12 and 6 points for finishing 1st, 2nd and 3rd on the 2 end game scoring tiles. For example with this tile, the player that built the most satellites will gain 18 points. For ties, points are divided evenly between the tied players. Gain 4 points for every 3, 4 and 5 passed on each of the research tracks. For example, a player will score 4 points if they're on rank 3 of a track and 12 points if they're on rank 5. Gain 1 point for every 3 credits, knowledge and all remaining, the most points wins with no tiebreaker. That's Gaia Project, a network building resource management game. Please like this video if you found it useful, share it to let others know about it and subscribe to the channel for more how to play videos as well as other board game related content. You can find me on Twitter at JTR Podcast, support the channel at patreon.com forward slash JTR Podcast and you can find my blog and the podcast at JTRPodcast.com. I've been Rob aka Jester the Rogue and until next time, keep playing this game, it's awesome.